the Lord. Amen, amen. John chapter 14, the gospel of John chapter number 14. Look at verse number 16. The gospel of John chapter 14, verse number 16, and it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that ye may abide with him forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. We're in a subject matter of the present day ministry of, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The present day ministry of the Holy Spirit. Here Jesus promises the believer that he's going to send another Comforter to be with us, in us, and for us. Amen. And many people don't, don't understand what is Holy Spirit up to in these days, amen, these last days. And because many people have a misconception, a misunderstanding about the present day ministry of Holy Spirit, typically they shun Holy Spirit because they are afraid of what they've seen in church that people have labeled as being the Holy Spirit, amen. And because of that, now I don't want to receive Holy Spirit because I don't want to, I don't want to lose my cool. Amen. And so, so I want to just share with you what is Holy Spirit doing right now? What is his ministry to the believer right now? And so we found out in, the, in previous weeks that one of the ministry uh, 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 opportunities the Holy Spirit has for us now is that the fruit of the Spirit found in Galatians chapter 5, that it will operate in our lives. So Holy Spirit comes to make us love, have joy, have peace, have long suffering, gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance. The Bible says against such there is no law because Holy Spirit is doing that on the inside of us. Uh, he's perfecting the fruit in us. Amen. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where we ended off on last week. Not only is Holy Spirit causing the fruit to, to develop in us, but now Holy Spirit gives us gifts to the body. Amen. And each and every one of these gifts should be functioning in the body right now. Amen. 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 This is not for the sweet by and by. This is for the here and now. Amen. And it's Holy Spirit's responsibility to distribute these gifts as he wills, not as we want them. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 12. Let's start at verse number one. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work at that one and self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. So on last week we begin to break down these different gifts that the Bible says that the Spirit gives to the body of Christ. And so today we're going to continue in trying to get an understanding of what these gifts are and how they function in the body of Christ. On last week we dealt with the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Today we're going to deal, start dealing with uh, the gift of faith, amen? The gift of faith. Now, the gift of faith is not saving faith. Praise the Lord. Hear me now. It's not saving faith. It's not the faith that gets me saved. That's not this type, the gift of faith. It is not faith that comes by hearing the word of God. Amen. Because we know that faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. This is not that, that gift. Amen. It is, not part, it is not part of the fruit of the spirit. It is not that gift. Praise the Lord. Amen. The gift that I'm talking about, the gift of faith, watch this now comes as a result of a person believing to such a degree 
that God says, whatever they say about it, that's what it's going to be. Amen? Now, we see examples of this type of faith, the gift of faith, in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Praise the Lord. They tell Nebuchadnezzar, look, it doesn't matter what you say. You could heat that fire up seven times hotter than it's normally heated up, but our faith says we're going to serve God. Amen? And, and look, if God deliver us, praise God for that. But if he choose not, we still ain't going to bow down. Amen. That's the type of faith I'm talking about. The faith that says, even in the midst of this perishing predicament that I find myself in, God, I'm going to trust you. Same thing with Daniel. When they threw Daniel in the lion's den, Daniel had enough faith in God that he wasn't going to bow down. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, go over to uh, John chapter 11. Jo the Gospel of John chapter number 11. Praise the Lord. The Gospel of John, chapter number 11. Now, here we see Jesus operating in the gift of faith when it comes down to raising Lazarus from the dead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at verse number 17. John, chapter 11, beginning at verse number 17. Look what it says. Then when Jesus was come, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was come, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Amen. Jesus said unto her, well, but I know that even now, verse 22, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the, at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said, had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master has come, and call it for thee. And as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. The Jews then were with her, that were with her in the house, and comforted her. When they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then, Mary, then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping with her that came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should uh, uh, not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that, that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he had been dead how many days? Four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where, where the dead was laid, and Jesus left, lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. So here, here, here couple things were in operation here. The gift of faith was in operation. 
Plus the gift of healing was in operation. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus called him forth. He said, Father, I know you already heard me. And I, I, I said back in verse 11 that he's only sleeping. He's not dead, but he's asleep. Amen. It took bold faith to say that he's sleeping. Because they said he had been dead for four days. But Jesus declared he's only sleeping. Amen. Amen. And so he tells his father, say, Father, I know you heard me. And so when I call Lazarus forth, he's going to come forth. Now he's also going to come forth, but he's also going to be healed because he must live. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the gift of faith, the gift of faith is more than just having faith for salvation. It's more than just having faith by hearing the word of God. It's about declaring to God, God, I know you're going to do this. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Now, the next gift was the gift of healing. Amen. The gift of healing is with an S. Now, this is the ability to deliver the sick and to destroy the works of the devil in the human body. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the gifts of healing, uh, how can I put this? We want to limit God in how he heals us. And God has multiple ways of healing us. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we cannot limit God based upon our own understanding. Because our minds will not understand what God is doing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, the gifts come as the spirit wills and the faith of the person it's not a factor. When God sends the gift of healing, whomever God wants to heal, their faith is not a factor. Just their participation. Amen. <laughs> See, God can allow the gifts of healing, and you might not even have faith for healing. But because the atmosphere is set, and you participate in the gifts of healing, yeah. then you get your healing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. See, but we want, we, want do, we, want, we, we want God to do it a certain way. God, I want you to do it like this. And God said, no, I ain't going to do it like that. I'm not going to do it in your conventional way. Now, many people get mad at Benny because he's blowing folk. Well, if blowing on folk gets you healed and you need your healing, you better tell him to blow. Amen, 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 amen. Now, the, the results of the gift of healing are normally instantaneous. Amen. A person can receive it just like that. Now, again, their faith have nothing to do with the gift of healing. God says, look, I'm going to do this because this is what I will. Now, God has to use somebody in the earth realm who will believe him that that will flow through him to get the gifts of healing to the body of Christ. Amen. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, amen. 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 Now, the gifts of healing should not be charged. Should not, you, know, you, you, know, you shouldn't charge folk for the gifts of healing. <laughs> let's, just say, let's just say that the gifts of healing flow through pastor. Now, I should not come and say, well, I got the $25 healing line, I got the $50 healing line, and I got the $100 healing line. Now, it depends on what denomination you give me, whether or not you will get the healing, what type of healing you're going to get. Matthew chapter 10. Watch this now. Now, I believe, I believe that God gives the body of Christ these gifts. But if anybody, and I mean anybody, tells you to send them $25 and get your healing, don't send it. Because how can I charge God for an anointing on my life? Charge his people when he says that it's a free gift. All right. Matthew chapter number 10. Matthew chapter 10. Now, now, now let me say this. It's different than saying that I'm going to charge you for the gift versus you saying out of your heart, I want to sow into that ministry. Amen. Right, right, right. Amen. Now, it, it's no problem with you sowing into a ministry that, that is doing great things with the body of Christ. Amen. But if they say I'm going to charge you, yeah. Yeah. amen, 
God didn't charge them to give them the gift. Look at verse 7, Matthew chapter 10, verse number 7. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely <laughs> you give. So, so, so when the gifts of healing are in operation, there is no charge for the gift. Because freely I received it, and freely I must give it. Amen, amen, amen. Woo, praise the Lord, amen, amen. Now, the gifts of healing now, watch this now, are free from error and mistakes. Amen. The gifts won't leave something in you. Like a scalpel. Yeah. They won't leave tissue in you. Amen. The gifts of healing are free from mistakes and error. God already knows what your condition is. Okay. When the gifts of healing are in operation, and I'm going to call it surgery, God is not going to operate on your left toe when he knows it's your left arm that's messed up. Amen. <laughs> Praise God, amen. The gifts of healing go straight to where you need the gift to operate at. <laughs> Praise the Lord, amen. Amen. Now, 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 here's what happens. Because we don't understand that sickness does not come from God. Amen. God didn't make you sick. Amen. What well, the Lord is making me sick for, for, for what I've done in the past. No, God don't need to make you sick for that. Amen. Amen. Sickness come as a result of five different things. One is satanic opposition. All right. Now the devil wants to attack your body because he knows that your body is the temple of God. Amen. And so in order to destroy the temple, he tries to destroy your body. Amen. And then the devil understands that your body is a tool for the Holy Ghost to use in the earth realm. Because he has obligated himself to, to use a, a human body to function in, in earth realm. Amen. And then the devil understands that God has placed his treasure on you. The devil understands that. So if I can destroy the body, I can destroy the place where the treasure is. Woo. So you are the temple, you are a tool, and he understands that treasure is in you, Jeff, treasure. God has placed his treasure on the inside of you. And so what the devil says is, oh, I got to destroy that. I got to destroy it and make it look as if God did it to him. <laughs> See, because if, if I can get the believers to blame God instead of blaming me, I've done my job. I've deceived them into believing that sickness, God... God, God did that to you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Then, 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 then the, second, the second thing, the second thing, that's human error. People get, make an error and uh, get sick. Praise the Lord. Amen? And then third thing is, you can be in sin and get sick. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah you, you, you think you're just having a good time. Amen? You think that fornication was good, but that, that fornication can cause you to get sick. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I ain't going to even go there. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to go there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, <laughs> move on, Pastor. Move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. Then there, there, there's birth infirmities. Amen. They can be healed from their birth infirmities. And then finally, natural accidents. When you have an accident, you can get sick. Praise the Lord. Now, go to Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. Now, let's look at some of the ways that God healed folk. Amen. The gifts of healing and operation. Now, here in Numbers 21, God uses something, a symbol of something, that was causing his people pain in order to get them delivered. Amen? 
and those who would participate, participate with the process got their healing. All right? Numbers 21. Look at verse number 6. Numbers chapter 21. Watch this now. Numbers 21. Look at verse number 6. Look what it says. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he what? Now look, look, look at how God worked this thing out. They were being bitten by serpents. But God says, Moses, this is what I want you to do. I want you to make a serpent of brass, put it on a pole, and those who will look up at it if they were ever bitten, watch this now, will be healed. Now, could you imagine in those days that some of those folk who despised the serpents, <laughs> amen, said, I ain't looking up there. I ain't looking up there. And they missed the opportunity for God to heal them because they didn't want to participate in the process. But everybody who looked up, Everybody that looked up got their healing. Oh, my goodness. God can use whatever method he wants. Amen. We just can't limit God to say, God, I want you to do it just this way. Amen. Okay. Same thing happened with Naaman. Naaman had leprosy. And uh, he, he, they, they, they told him, hey, look, there's a man of God over there. Go down there, talk to him, he'll get you healed. Well, Naaman thinking that he was going to do all some, some, some spiritual uh, exercise on him. And when he gets there, the man of God didn't even come out. And then he sends his servant and say, look, tell him to go dip in the Jordan seven times. And his leprosy will be gone. Well, Naaman got a little upset with, 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 with the man of God. He said, well, look, man, I, co I, come from, I come from clean water. And you want me to go dip in the Jordan seven times? Well, yeah, that's, what, that, that's the process. This is how God is going to heal you. Amen. Okay, for instance, right now, somebody's sick and God can say, okay, tell them to run around the church right now, seven times. And some of y'all look at me like, <laughs> with all these folk here, you want me to do what? You want me to run around the church? Yeah, run around the church seven times. And then by the time you get around the seven times, then you're going to have your healing. And some will say, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. I, ain't do I, 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 will, I, I, I dare not do that. Because we don't do that in our church. <laughs> well, news bulletin, it ain't your church. Yeah. Amen. He say, this is my church. And I can, do, I can do in my church whatever I want to do with it. So if I tell you to run, run. But here's Naaman. Naaman said, I ain't doing that. Then the servant goes to him and says, Master, if we told you to do something great, wouldn't you have done it? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, well, go dip. As soon as he obeyed the man of God and went dipped like he said, he came up and the Bible says he was healed of his leprosy. But you cannot limit God. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. 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 Now, here's another situation where the gift of healing was in operation. Here's a woman in Mark who had an issue of blood for 12 years. I, I could not... You know, I, 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 I tell Sister Gwen all the time, Brother Sean, I, I couldn't be no woman. <laughs> Lord Jesus, y'all go through some stuff. <laughs> I praise the Lord. And so here this woman, she, 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 I mean, she having a condition for 12, 12, 12 years. 12 years. Could you, 12, get that in your mind, 12 not 12 days, but 12 years, she's been having this condition. But she says, if I could just get to Jesus and touch just the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. So the Bible says she goes and she touches Jesus' hem. 
And the Bible says that virtue went out of his body. Amen. All because healing was in operation. Okay, well, I want y'all to see this. I want you to see this. Go to, uh, go to uh, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. Look at verse number 34. Matthew chapter 14. Verse number 34. Now, she wasn't the only one that received her healing based upon just touching his garment. Amen. But the gifts of healing were in operation because the anointing was there. Look at verse 34. Matthew 14, verse 34. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Genezareth. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as, as many touch were made perfectly whole. Now, now watch this now. He said they brought them all to him. But then he says, as many as touched. So everybody didn't do it. Because every, some, some people might have a mental condition that said, I ain't doing that. He, he just got on clothes. Amen. He got on a suit just like me. Amen. But it's not in the suit, it's in the anointing. Okay, okay. All right. Acts, Acts, chapter number 19. Watch this. Acts chapter 19. <laughs> Amen. Everything, listen to me now, everything you see on Christian television, you got to be careful. You got to, you know, Amen. You have to have discerning the spirits. Amen. Now go back to the statement that I made earlier about people charging you for water, charging you for oil, charging you for a handkerchief. Amen. It is biblical that there can be transference based upon other articles. It is very biblical. That the anointing can transfer as a result of a, a contact of some type of material. Okay? My challenge is that you don't charge me for contacting the material. For instance, let's just say that pastor prays on his handkerchief. You know? And the uh, Spirit of God, you know, by his spirit, anoints this handkerchief. And then you take this handkerchief and then go lay it on one of your loved ones, the sick loved one. And then all of a sudden, the transference that the anointing has on the handkerchief gets on the person that's sick. Then all of a sudden, they're healed. Well, that's up to God to do all that. Amen? That ain't up to me. And I can't say, okay, well, I want $2 for my handkerchief. If you want my anointing, I done blew my nose and everything. If you want the anointing on my, $2. That's, that's not what the gifts are for. This oil came from Walmart. Amen. We prayed for this oil. And we ask God to use this oil as a point of contact. But I can't charge you when I anoint you with oil. Amen. I can't ask you, okay, I got some holy water. I just got it out the tap. Amen. But I've seen it, man, where people say, well, this is some special oil. I mean, this oil came from wherever. Look, I've had opportunity where I didn't have that type of oil. So you know what I went and got? I went in my cupboard, got me some Crisco. Praise the Lord. Because it's not in the type of oil, it's in the anointing. Right. 
It's in the anointing. Okay? Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Look at verse number 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Stop there, stop there. And God wrought special miracles. But he needed somebody in the earth realm that he could trust with the anointing. That Paul would not start saying, oh, this is me. Amen. The healing, the miracles came as a result of God. Not Paul. Paul was just a willing vessel. And guess what? God will use you if you are a willing vessel. Okay, watch this, watch. We only want to, we only want the pastor to be the one that the gifts flow through. Listen to me. If I'm on vacation and in California, you better get a believer who trusts God to lay their hands on you. I love you. I'm going to pray for you from California. But if my vacation is not over, God, God does the special miracles. Amen? God does. Okay, 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 let's keep, continue to read. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Now listen how the Amplified reads verse 12. So that handkerchiefs or towels or aprons which had touched his skin were carried away and put upon the sick and their diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. So in other words, Paul was sweating. So I'll make it plain to you. Paul wiped the sweat. They took the handkerchief and laid it upon the sick, and the sick recovered. But Paul didn't do it. God wrought the miracles. God just used the handkerchief as a point of contact. That's all this is, a point of contact. Even when we lay our hands on you, it's not because, you know, the hand has something special in it. The hand is only an instrument, a point of contact to get my faith in agreement with your faith and your faith in agreement with my faith. And so now we have a point of contact. Amen. But it's God that does the miracles. I recall, I recall just a few weeks ago we were praying. And, and, uh, and so as I was praying, the Spirit of God said, don't touch them. It was a particular person. He said, don't touch me. I'm going to do something. I said, okay, God, cool. I, I ain't mad at you. So I, I you know, I, I, I told, I, 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 look, I told Gwen, I said, because Gwen, she normally ministers with me. I, I, you know, I have her with me to minister. Praise the Lord. Because we're, we're a team. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so, so as, as I was ministering, I, I, I kind of touched. I said, don't touch this one. Don't touch this because God can do something. And all I did was just hold my hand up like this. And then, boom, the person went out. Now, it, again, it's not in who doing the ministry. Because if Holy Ghost ain't there, amen, ain't nothing going to happen. It's going to be an empty hand on the empty head. That's all it's going to be. Amen. That's all it's going to be. But there are times that God will use points of contact in order to get a person healed. Right. Amen? Right. Get a person set free. So it is biblical. So I don't want you to say, well, God, I only want you to do it this way. Because there are different methods that God can use to get you healed. Right. All that you're concerned about is that you get your healing. Oh, right. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Mm -mm. So there are special anointings, Amen. 
special anointing, that, 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 that God will use special things and services uh, to, to get folk healed and delivered because that's part of the gifts of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is doing some healing right now. Amen. He's doing some healing. And I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to use many of you Amen. in the operation of the gifts of healing. Amen. Amen. But you have to allow him to use you. And here's the thing. God, has said, God said in his word that he will give the gifts as it pleases him. So if you are a candidate that he chooses to use in the gifts of healing, then just accept the gifts so that the body can get healed. Amen. Don't tell God, use somebody else. He's trying to use you. Amen. Amen, amen. Now, now when I'm standing for my healing, now here, here's, 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 here's the key now. When I'm standing for my healing, I cannot get in fear. First thing the devil want to do is get you in fear. That you're going to die. Amen. This is Mary Jane. Don't get in fear. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm telling you, don't get in fear. Don't get frustrated. Amen. Don't get frustrated. Praise the Lord. Because he's not operating on your timetable. It could be that God is trying to prepare your heart right now through this lesson to, for you to understand that he's going to use different methods to get you healed. Amen. Okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If, if you needed $1,000, would you care if God sent a dog with a bag full of $1,000? And he came and just dropped it on your porch and said, bow wow, roof, roof. <laughs> what, what you going to do? You're going to say, well, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I got, what I, I, I got what I wanted from God. Well, see, same thing with healing. See, some of y'all just like, well, you know, I got to get it this way. Now, let me say this. Doctors are good. Don't, don't, don't ever get me wrong. Doctors are good. Amen. Medicine is good. OK, but even with the doctors, even with the medicine, they can't heal you. Amen. They can't heal you. It is God that heal us. Amen. God is the one that heal you. Amen. The medicine only counteract the symptoms. God is still the one that's going to heal you. So if, if he chooses to use the doctor to heal you, praise the Lord for that. But if he chooses to heal you based upon a handkerchief, praise the Lord for the handkerchief. Amen. Don't get desperate when you're waiting for your healing. Because see, when you get desperate, you start doing anything. Amen. Don't lose your confidence in God's ability to heal you. Because, again, he is the healer. I am the Lord that healeth thee, he says. Whew. I, like, I like when God starts saying, I am. <laughs> but when God starts saying, I am, and then he say, I am that I am. <laughs> oh, my God. I am. I am the Lord that healeth you. Amen. Then, then, then I must saturate my heart with the word of God. Amen. See, the more I hear the word on healing over and over and over again, it sets the atmosphere. It sets my spirit up to receive the healing. Amen. Then I got to act like I'm healed. Amen. I don't, care, I don't care how I'm feeling. Amen. I already know it's done. So I act like it. Amen. <laughs> and see, when I'm acting like it, I start praising God. Amen. I got to shout in my spirit. I got joy in my feet. I mean, I, look, I'm, I'm, look, I'm going to praise God for this healing. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. So there are gifts of healing. So, so don't, don't despise how God will heal you. Amen. If God chooses to heal you in a, in a method that is uncommon to man, it's just uncommon to man. It ain't uncommon to God. Because God can do whatever he want to do. So God can give us the gifts of healing. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, okay. Then there's the, the working of miracles. The working of miracles. The next one was a working of miracles. Amen. Now, miracles are the supernatural intervention in the ordinary course of nature. It's a temporary suspension of natural facts. Amen. God worked miracles 
at the Red Sea. That was a miracle. How is it that you got a sea with water and God tells Moses, just stretch forth your rod? And it, it divided the Red Sea to the point to where they could walk on dry ground. That was a miracle, amen. Amen, that was a miracle. That was a miracle, praise the Lord, amen. Then uh, 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 go to, I want you to see this one, Joshua chapter 10. See, God will suspend some natural order in order for you to get the victory. <laughs> Woo, praise the Lord. Yeah. Woo, praise the Lord. Joshua chapter 10. Look at verse number 7. Joshua chapter number 10. You ready? Joshua chapter 10, verse 7. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth by Beth Haran and smote them to Azekah and unto Mekedah. And it came to pass as they fled from Israel before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Haran that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon, the, uh, 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 upon, upon them unto uh, Ezekah, and they, and they died. They were more which died in the uh, hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered him, delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jajar? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. So look what happened. God suspended time. It was a miracle that, that Joshua say, son, Stay right there. Don't move. Moon don't even try to come up right now. And the Bible said God orchestrated that miracle so that the children of Israel can win the battle. Now watch this now. God can suspend some things for you. Amen. Amen. He, 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 could, he could stop some things right now. Stop right now, right now with a special miracle. Say, oh, no, you stand right there. You stand still right there. But now, do, do I believe God for a special miracle? That God will suspend stuff for me, hold off things for me, in order that I might receive the victory. God can do that for you. <laughs> Woo, praise the Lord. Yes, he did. Okay, all right, all right. That was another special miracle found in John chapter 6. Just make a note of it. John chapter 6, verse number 1 through 14. They had some hungry people. Amen. They were following Jesus. And Jesus says, what do we have in the cupboards? What do we have in the kitchen to cook? Amen. <laughs> and they say, Lord, all we have is a couple pieces of fish and a few loaves of bread. But what is this among so many? They had over 5,000 men, not counting the children. Now, I don't know about you, but I could eat two pieces of fish myself. Amen? I could get two down. Now, Brother Porter could get three down. I, I know. I, I have lunch with Brother Porter. Brother Porter, give me, the, give me all the fish. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and so, so here, is, here is Jesus saying, what do you have? Because we're going to need a miracle now. Okay, okay. Let's not talk about them children. Let's talk about you right now. 
Because see, right now you're saying, well, Lord, all I have is this. But what is this amongst my family? <laughs> God will take that one pork and bean <laughs> and fill you up. Amen. Yeah, he will. Yes, yes, he will. Jesus takes that little bit. Take those two fish, those few loaves of bread, and say, Father, I thank you. I thank you. See, see, that, that's why you ought to bless your food every time you get a chance. Amen. See, because God can expand what you call little into much to where you have leftovers day after day after day. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Then, then I begin to think about how can God drop manna from heaven? I mean, the children of Israel were hungry. And God said, okay, I'm going to give you some bread. And it just started falling down from the sky. And then God did it every day. He only let enough fall down for them to eat for the day. And then tomorrow he gave them fresh manna from heaven. And then the day after that he gave them fresh manna. Special miracles, amen. God is no respect of person. What he's done for others, he'll do it for us. God will drop stuff down out of the sky for you, man. If you can believe God for it, amen. Special miracles, amen. Amen. So God fed these 5,000. Then he told, he told the disciples, go pick up the rest of the stuff. Amen. Go gather all of the fragments, the pieces. Get it all. And they had 12 baskets full after, they, after everybody ate. After everybody got a piece of meat, after everybody got a piece of bread, they had 12 baskets full. Special miracle, amen? And then, then we, just, we just read it earlier, we read about uh, Lazarus. Man, could you imagine? This boy been dead for four days. Four days. Body decomposing. Body begins to stink. And Jesus had the audacity to say, move the stone away from him. Martha say, Lord, <laughs> we understand this process. And by now, he stinketh. Amen. But you say, I don't care if he stink or not. Just do what I told you to do. Because I'm going to show you a special miracle. And I believe that Jesus had to just call Lazarus out. He couldn't just say, y'all come out, because all of them would have came out. <laughs> Those who are dead, come out. Everybody, everybody, whoa. Everybody, started walking. everybody get up. Everybody would have got up. So he had to call Lazarus by name and say, listen, I want you to come forth. Why? Because I got a special miracle happening. Amen. God can do it for you. God can do it for you. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. 